Thanks for doing that. This is Maureen, um, and I just wanted to introduce the members of our uh, Lean Mean Hacking Hackathon Machine team. We've got Richard, and we've got Arun, we've got Risa, Zach, of course, and we've got Ashna and myself. Just want to make sure everybody knew who was on the team. All right, and so I'll go ahead and start now. 2020 has been a difficult year. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought upon new, terrifying measures across the world. A once distant news story has now become a recognized pandemic. In our own backyard. Schools have shut down. For many students, this has become a real problem. Millions of families depend on access to government subsidized meals. And when schools are closed, students may go hungry. Restaurants have closed their doors. They are now looking for business and creative ways to keep operating and to retain their employees. Or else they may be shut down for good. Bus drivers are looking for work, but the school's closed. Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub drivers are also suffering slowdowns. So what do we do? Introducing Lunchbox by C2M. Where restaurant owners or foodies partner up with drivers or the wheels to connect with schools and feed the kids. It's easy. Download the app and join the cause. Start by searching the dashboard for an open order that matches you. Schools look for the perfect order opened by your local foodie. Review the order and learn about your local foodie to determine if this order is right for you. If so, accept the order. As a foodie, search through orders opened by schools in your district with the right budget for your situation. Learn more about the school and the meal restrictions and requirements to make sure you are a fit. If so, accept the order. Foodies and schools can also create a new order if they cannot find the perfect fit in the dashboard. Once created, all possible match users within your district will receive a notification about your order to start the partnering process. After a match is made, that order will be sent out via text and email to all delivery users in the area with the opportunity to get that order on wheels. Similar to foodies and schools, Wheels can search the dashboard at any time to accept matched orders that fit their needs. At this point, the order is on wheels. After all meals for this order are delivered, the order is closed and it's on to the next one. Users can also visit their own personal analytics page to view current statuses and statistics for all past and current orders. The world is struggling right now, but that means that more than ever, it's important we come together and make a difference. Lunchbox. Sign up today. So with that, um, hopefully you guys could hear and audio was all fine with that. Um, yep, sounded great. Yep. Cool. So I'd like to pass over to Maureen um, to kind of talk through 
what the where the idea came from um, and why and walk through our presentation. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate it. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I wanted to be able to thank everyone for the opportunity to do this. At the very beginning of the hackathon announcement, uh, we came up with the idea based on our recent news stories that once the schools closed and shut down, they found at an alarming rate that they were having challenges figuring out how they were going to continue to provide meals to children that were dependent upon those meals and being part of the school. Um, Zach, can you move on to the next slide, please? One of the things, this is just one example of the many news stories that were out there, and this was very timely because this was very much the weekend we were doing the design for our application. And this article clearly says that 58% of many, 29.7 million students, 58% of their daily nutrients come from school meals. Some of them have breakfast, most of them have lunch meals there. And this has com had completely been disrupted with the coronavirus shutdown of the schools. So our team came up with an idea, go forward, Zach, you know, to help these challenges. During, right now the challenge was as children could not receive the food and the lunches, and the administrators and teachers were trying to work through manual processes for food preparation and identifying how they were gonna get the meals to the children and whether it was gonna be through parent pickup or through delivery service, they were gonna uh, have volunteers deliver. And restaurants, of course, we all know restaurants are closing as we saw in the video and we've seen everywhere, uh, with the exception of delivery, restaurants are very much looking for opportunity for revenue, new revenue opportunities. Um, go ahead, Zach. So introducing Lunchbox. And as we saw in the video, we've got three categories of people or, or users for our platform, for the Lunchbox platform. There's the kids, of course, and the families that are looking to identify how many meals they need and how many meals they get per day. There's the foodies that sign up and say, you know, how, how many meals they can prepare and what types of meals they can pre pre prepare each day and provide to the school. So they're, they're, they're there as a user. Then the third component, of course, is the wheels, the delivery system. You know, the, right now, a lot of the, the parents were picking up meals every day, every morning they go and pick them up. Another way is for volunteers, but we, we're looking at this as a way for people that are in the driving business today, whether it be the school bus drivers or some of the drive uh, food delivery services to be able to jump on board and go in and sign up and, and take deliveries as well. Go ahead, Zach, we can move forward. So it's a place where all three of these constituencies can, can go, to the, go to a dashboard and, and participate in solving this challenge that we have today. So, um, Zach, can you go up one, go up one build? Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. So what we, what we did is we originally put together a, a design for this, for the platform. Okay. In the middle here is where, uh, what I call the kind of the match.com for lack of a better term for all of these, uh, needs. Okay. You've got the kiddos on the left and the foodies and the restaurants. Okay. That are saying this, these are the needs that we have. And then you've got to match those with the wheels the delivery service, okay? And that's what our platform does, is kind of provides a hub for this activity to take place. The, the portal for, for meal ordering, you know, parents can go in and say, this is, this is how many meals we need. It's a very consistent number generally, but, but they have the opportunity to go in and order and change the orders. And there are obviously set menus and so forth that they can use as well. Same thing for portal for restaurants and grocery stores that provide packaged food or prepackaged meals they have the ability to go in and say how many meals they can prepare on any given day and they, they set the date and so forth. And clearly we'll demo some of this as we, as we go forward. Then on the right-hand side, you can go ahead and do the build as well. So on the right-hand side, we have the wheels, okay? Today, you know, as I said, there's parent pickup and home delivery where they have volunteers. But what we're looking to do is uh, integrate uh, One's intelligent vehicle routing solution Hema was kind enough to walk us through and give us an idea about that, about that opportunity to be able to actually just generate a routing uh, maps for deliveries uh, based on that application. And of course, the school bus drivers right now aren't working. So this is an opportunity for them to uh, maintain employment and get some type of revenue or some type of um, income by providing these delivery services. 
And going forward, what we're seeing is an integration to an already existing delivery, food delivery service. As we all know, the Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash is a very well, a very innovative and very well um, proven platform for matching food, uh, restaurants, food and, and uh, delivery, okay? So that's an existing platform that we can tag into and partner with and, and get them into the loop as well. And on the left-hand side, you'll see the term shelters because one of the things that we wanted to say is, okay, what happens with this innovative idea once the entire, pray soon, the uh, COVID-19 situation alleviates itself and the kids are back in school? Well, what we said is on a go-forward basis, we could continue to use a similar platform. The community could use it to take to do to match food for like homeless shelters or other shelters or other types of food pantries. So as you can see today uh, in the news, there are tens of thousands of people that are lining up every week to get food at the food food pantries all over all over the United States. But we're seeing it on the news here locally here in North North uh, Texas. Uh, so that, that is one of the things that we did want to take into consideration for going forward is to make sure that we were building something that wasn't just useful for today, but had need uh, a market in the future. Uh, go ahead, Zach. So this is our initial um, platform, our initial demo that we're going to walk you through the, where we match, you can see the, the request. There's a new request for food. Uh, there's a new request for eaters, or in this case, the kids, the children, and then there's a new request for wheels. Okay, so you, and you go in and match those and approve those, and they go ahead and, and set them on, put, as the video said, then the food is on wheels and it's delivered to the children. And then we have dashboards uh, pretty much allowing the, the school administrators to go in and look every day and say, okay, where are we at? How many orders have we filled? Or even on a weekly basis, we've created a dashboard for them to be able to go in and see at a glance how things are running. So with that, one of the things we wanted to talk to is we were re requested to as identify kind of who played uh, which roles in the team. This was a fantastic team and is a fantastic team to work with. It's been, you know, as we all know, the last few weeks have been very busy and, and we appreciate everybody being able to work in the evenings and on the weekends. So this is kind of where we, how we broke down the, the dashboard of where people contribute. Everybody kind of contributed everywhere, but there's some particular areas. Okay. Okay, uh, Raisa, or I'm, I'm sorry, Zach, I think we're going to go to a demo now. Is that yeah. correct? One, yep. one uh, interesting note point for this team is that they didn't have any developers. That's, so they mm -hmm. built all this stuff without uh, development background, right? Right. That's yep. right. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so um, thank you, Yasser. Yeah, and thanks, Maureen. So I, you know, I, the video itself was meant to really demo the product, but also I want to be able to jump in there for the last, it looks like we only have a couple minutes on that 15, but to kind of add on to the point of Maureen's, you know, this is a workflow driven application that can be fully driven by roles and notifications, right? So while there are, um, you know, a lot of interfaces to come in and build orders and, 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 and uh, accept orders, it's really all about being focused on where the workflow is, where the order is in that flow, and whose um, opportunity it is to accept that order. Um, all of those things come together into, you know, again, on the video, you kind of saw this, but the, I'm in an admin account here, but essentially you, it's organized by orders, which um, depending on your role, you know, if I'm a school, um, then I'm going to be coming into a place that needs eaters right i mean if, if we look at the workflow again real quick that means that basically a foodie or a restaurant had created the order um and so that's kind of you know where the process starts for me i can look at open orders uh, i can come into something like that and actually review the information um of that uh of that foodie right and restaurant um, re review all the information. And if I say, you know, this is a local restaurant I really want to team up with, um, a, a lot of this for the restaurant side can be enough of, as, as much about meeting some cost and the opportunity while they can't serve inside their, you know, actual brick and mortars, as well as for, you know, um, uh, overall brand uh, knowledge and, and getting out in the community. And then when these times are over, even being able to do things like 
you know, extra food and things like that for shelters, being able to use a system like that. Um, but like I showed in the, in the video, you know, you would actually accept those orders to move on to the next spot. And again, being uh, driven totally by notifications, everybody that needs to know about that order um, is, is notified. Um, lastly, you know, you can create a new order as well. Um, and, you know, I showed that, that in the video as well. But that way, the reason why we have it set up this way is that to, no matter who starts the process, it's dynamic in a way that can, uh, you know, either you can come in and pick up an order that's on the way, that's planned for like a week from now, um, or you can start yourself. So it kind of helps everybody's roles. I started filling out one before um, to have a part in the beginning, middle, and end in the process of creating a new or, or of an order and feeding the kids. So ultimately that's, that's about it. You know, we mentioned a dashboard. We have a dashboard that would be available to users that can update, you know, the numbers are kind of small right now because we just have a few, um, a few orders open in test data, but overall that's, that's kind of the value. I think we all uh, were passionate about the, the actual scenario here. And we think that really there's three, there's a lot of struggling people today um, and, 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 you know, in, in business and, and even in this scenario. But these are some of the three that we thought of that really can come together and help each other out um, in a way that not only business wise, but, you know, obviously feeding children and doing things like that can benefit all three users or people in our communities. Um, so with that, I think that's it. Um, Yasser, should we just move now to Q&A or any questions about the, the platform itself? Yeah, so let me ask the judges. Uh, judges, do you guys have any questions for the team on their presentation? Um, I do have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. I believe yeah. my team if the others have questions too. Yeah, you can go ahead, Rashmi, start. Okay. Um, it's a, I, I really love this. I, I like this application because we, um, you know, I've seen this problem firsthand. Um, you know, the schools were, were trying to figure out how to get the food to the right people. So, um, in fact, for Plano ISD, they, uh, you know, there's several emails going out. They were trying to figure out how to standardize this, how to scale it through so many schools. So this is an excellent idea. Um, I guess it, this could also be extended to senior housing. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of seniors in certain areas of the cities um, where they were allowed to go into grocery stores early in the morning to collect, you know, their, um, I, I guess this could be extended mm -hmm. to some platform yes. like that where, you know, they, they wouldn't have to make a trip to the grocery store, but be able to match up, um, yes. you know, their uh, food ordering with the driver and be able to ha have it delivered. Because I, I know on next door, a lot of people were posting this. Um, so, so how, how do you how do you feel the extension? How how easy would it be to extend this platform for other user groups? So that was it, that was one of the things that we said from the beginning that okay, this is eventually is going to end, but we definitely want the flexibility for it to be extended. The 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 food portal, you know, in terms of the kids, what you would do is just create another user group that would be in in your case the senior housing. Uh, situation where they would have it, the senior housing would be an address, right, a specific location, and they would go in and order food and place the number of meals that they would like. Uh, again, we have the ability to identify allergies and preferences in terms of vegan or non-vegan, that type of thing. But it would just be a matter of creating another um, form of entry, another user group, another role, I guess is the right word in C2M terms. Is yeah, and role. I think if I can add to that, Maureen, sorry. Yep. Yeah, I, that's exactly right. And when we, I mean, even thinking through how we kind of brand this and what we call each of the roles, you know, we wanted to keep that in mind that, you know, some here we talk about the school, we talk about it as kids, but we also throughout um, kept in mind and, and going back harping on C2M, these types of things can change. We can change very quickly to where we're not actually focusing on that one user group of school or kids. It could be to your point, Rashmi, you know, the elderly, or as Maureen said before, the, the hungry, right? I mean, there's shelters downtown uh, in every, you know, local town that there are people struggling to eat. And again, looking at it from a high level view, pandemic or not, 
if there's people that are struggling to find food or get nutri- nutrition, and there's people that are struggling to get the food to people, to others, then, then what's, what's the problem, right? We've got to figure out a way to connect those folks and make a organize, like you said, Rashmi, I mean, it's definitely a difficult thing, but to organize how to help those people help each other. Right. So, so the, so it looks like the platform is, is, is a plug and play and it helps you change the rules. What about the content of what you're delivering? Uh, could that be changed out of, uh, you know, special orders to restaurants to maybe a grocery list from uh, uh, from a grocery, a grocery chain? Yeah, so I think um, that's kind of on our business or our the actual field level, the data content, like you mentioned, um, is, is definitely, I think on the same uh, answer that Maureen said, we could do those in sort of a profile level. I think that makes a lot of sense. So, um, having, even though, um, you know, a, we, we call them eaters, like, you know, we kind of show eaters here. Well, eaters may be school, it may be uh, the elderly, it may be shelters. In the same manner, we call it foodies, right? So it's not necessarily a restaurant. And if we, you know, expand this out, maybe we can have profiles where if you are a restaurant, you follow these, uh, this type of content or the, the metadata you need to provide. Whereas if you're a grocery store, maybe that totally changes. But the, the, the core platform and the build could be used the same way. The workflow could be used the same way. And that over time, of course, would be stabilized um, through like minor <laughs> updates and beta testing. But I think ultimately the goal would be to build it for a general use and then uh, portion out, as Maureen said, to more detailed uh, manners and like you said it's a great example a grocery store versus a restaurant well they may be looking at different things whereas a grocery store at the end of the day may have tons of food that just goes to waste well how do they go about you know getting in the platform and finding eaters you know um, and I think certainly there's it's only the beginning of the conversation really is what it is you know and, and there's a lot of opportunity there and, and, and ways to expand yeah. In, uh, what are the verification mechanisms to confirm, first of all, A, that the people logging in are mm-hmm. verified attendees of the ISD, and B, that the food was delivered successfully to the right party? Mm-hmm. So um, that's a good question as well. We actually have built this on, uh, well, on C2M, so as far as logins and everything uh, on the technical side, that sound. Um, as far as kind of a sub workflows of those types uh, uh, of questions or validations at the beginning, we don't have it in this demo here. But uh, I do, I do agree that would be something that would would need to be added. I think also when it comes to the delivery side of it, um, ultimately right now it's a manually driven closeout. So that delivery driver would, after delivering, actually jump on their phone and come into the record and say, "I've closed out." But I, uh, to your point, there's a lot more in there. And what Maureen had mentioned in the presentation is we really didn't want to reinvent the wheel there when there's such a really, um, a, there's, there's a really proven um, distribution channel out there, you know, like Uber Eats or Uber even, or, you know, dr- limo drivers, bus drivers, I mean, these people that already have systems in place that can validate orders, you know, one at a time, take pictures of the, um, you know, of the package at home or whatever validations need to happen. Um, we certainly could go to that level for this sort of phase one. The idea was to not reinvent that wheel um, and leave our options open. But yeah, that's, that's definitely, there's definitely ways to continue to, to uh, uh, add those types of features. In. Hey, I would put a one minute warning now because it's okay. mm-hmm. 25 minutes in. So okay. any other questions you guys have? Which very quick. How does this platform make revenue and what, what's the upside in terms of the revenue? What, what, what is so, the kind of revenue you're expecting? So mm-hmm. the, the initial uh, thought or thinking is that it would be possibly revenue neutral. Let for the, this is particularly for the school districts, okay? Today, the school districts have revenue neutral for the schools, I should say. The school districts themselves already have budgets for food and for drivers that are not being used today, right? So we're saying that those costs can be redistributed to, for example, restaurants that need revenue, okay? They can go in and say, some restaurants today may be just be willing to make very minimal 
as long as they can cover their costs, they just want to be able to stay in business and keep their employees on board, right? So they're, they're willing to make meals at, uh, 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 at cost and distribute them at cost, but they can change that over time. They get to identify what their prices are for their meals, okay? And then at the school, on the school side, they get to look at what the, what the foodies or what the restaurants have put out there and say, okay, does that fall within our budget per child? You know, it, it, there, there's obviously clearly a certain cost range per child that, today that they have and say, this is how much we have allocated per child per meal and make sure that they're, they're falling within those guidelines. On the driver's side, similarly, you know, you have drivers today that are unemployed because the schools aren't working. They're looking for an opportunity to continue to earn a wage and they can go in and put a rate if they, if they choose to, at which they're willing to make these deliveries. Or in addition to that, as we've said, the, the, the bus drivers, the school bus drivers are, there's a budget for them today already that's not being used. This could be a way to redistribute that budget and use it to, de to um, deliver um, meals to children, okay? Then on the other side of that driver, on the wheel side, is of course, as we said, partnering with Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub, or any other uh, drive food delivery service. They already have their cost, their, you know, their cost methodologies, and that's all done for them already. We would just have to go in and say, okay, is it, we, again, is it within the budget that we have allocated from a school standpoint? Now, when you step back and go to a different level and say, okay, what if it's just not the schools and we apply it to a different scenario, those, there are, there are numbers or values in each one of those user categories to say, if I'm a foodie, this is how much I'm willing to sell this meal for. If I'm an administrator, this is my cost structure. This is what I'm, what I'm willing to spend. Okay. And if I'm a, if I'm a um, driver, this is the, the delivery fee I'm, I'm willing to deliver for. Okay. So the, the, the capabilities are in there, depending on the scenario and what you set your rates at is, is where your revenue stream is coming from. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so we need to move to the next team. Okay. Um, I just want to quickly ask the other two judges if uh, they have any other questions. Uh, yes, uh, I love this idea and application, but uh, I suggest uh, this application uh, add the uh, donation window. Mm -hmm. So that kind of activity, I think that many people want a donation to the kid, school foods or homeless foods or houses or, yeah, I think it, that's it's a great that's, that's a great idea. Amazing. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I love the, the application, how, how you guys thought of the different and you know, business partners that you could partner. Um, I, I, because of the time constraint, I will uh, let the team go and I may ask questions later. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Like, you Thanks, can go ahead and ask, we have one more minute. So, it's oh, no, that's okay. turning around to happen now. Yeah. Uh, I, you, and I, you and I were in a hackathon once in Las Vegas, remember? <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> Yay! Hey, Zach. Yeah. Well, all, all right. right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Great Thank presentation. You, Excellent concept. So uh, let's switch. So again, can you please say your name again so the judges vote for the right yeah. row in the sure. Lean uh, Mean Hacking Machine. It's L M H M. Yeah. And we are, you know, it's the there's six yeah. of us on the team. Thank you, Maureen, Rich, Thank Zach, you. Riza, Ashna, and Arun. Yep. So, okay. so it's the LMHM which just went through, and right now we're going to get the next one.